Mark Pawsey. George, and I'll be mindful of your remarks. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, and may I congratulate the, uh, my colleague, the, the, my honourable friend, the member for Kettering, for bringing forward this very important issue and standing up for the concerns of his constituents and, uh, in a way that he has done uh, over many years. And he draws attention to the failures of the planning system, which affect my constituents in the northwestern part of my constituency, based around the larger village of Bulkington, which is within Neneaton and Bedworth, and the nearby villages of Anstey, Shilton and Barnacle, which are within Rugby Borough Council. And the very fact that some of these issues occur on a uh, local authority boundary adds to the complexity of this particular area. But it is important to understand why this particular community finds this part of uh, the country uh, a good place for them to be located. And that's a little to do with the nature of the way that uh, they, the travelling uh, community earns its living. Many of them have businesses uh, revolving around construction and property maintenance. And uh, the big urban area where many of their customers will be is in Coventry, which is immediately adjacent uh, to, uh, to, to these villages. And the, the choice of that location adds further to the complexity because this area is in the urban edge uh, around the city of Coventry where there is a green belt, where, of course, there is a presumption uh, against development. Um, and the fact that, in many cases, the Gypsum Traveller community have through, over a period of time, been able to secure consent or have, have, have developed without consent, does add to the feeling within the settled community that, on some instances, uh, there is an advantage being provided to uh, this particular uh, community. Um, all of the sites in my constituency are in Greenbelt, and there is a pattern of their development, which the member for uh, uh, Kettering has described, and very often the development takes place on a paddock on agricultural land, uh, often starting on the Friday of a bank holiday weekend, uh, which means that there is a delay in local planning authorities being able to get to site to start enforcement action, by which time some pretty substantial works have taken place. Um, uh, the, we've spoken uh, about the issue of retrospective applications because the uh, procedure then is that the local planning authority, the enforcement officer, goes out and he invites the applicant to submit a retrospective application. I'm very supportive of the comments of the member for Kettering in, in looking at the way that that ought to be changed. Uh, it eventually gets to the planning committee. The local planning committee turn it down because it's considered to be inappropriate development within the green belt. More time passes and the applicant decides to lodge an appeal. That appeal is dealt by the planning inspector whose decision overrides that of the elected members of the planning committee and very often the planning inspector will grant a consent, often highlighting the issue that has been covered in the debate, the lack of authorised pitches and concerns about where else applicant families would, would go. Um, and on occasions those consents are granted as temporary consents. And I want to deal with the issue of retrospective applications just a little more uh, and the issue of temporary consents within the planning system. Um, I raised concerns about the, the, retro, the nature of retrospective concerns with, of applications with my local planning officers who told me that often the issue was one of a failure to understand on the part of the, uh, the Gypsum Traveller community and the Honourable Member for Bedfordshire has spoken about the challenges of literacy within that community but you know, they do seem on occasions to be able to uh, afford to engage the best uh, planning lawyers and very often they're able to do so as a consequence of the very substantial increase in value that occurs as a consequence. And the issue of temporary consents is one that affects top lane in Barnacle in my constituency, which has a very complex planning history. But uh, with each subsequent application, the temporary consent gets closer to being permanent and that becomes a matter of great concern for residents in Bulkington.